Hello and welcome to Lake Helen First Congregational United Church of Christ virtual worship service for March 21st, 2021. It's wonderful to welcome Pastor Elliot Fay again uh, to give our scripture, pastoral message, and prayer during the Lenten season. And I'd really like to give a great big thanks to our worship committee who has um, been so faithful in preparing these services for us and all the many volunteers who have been participating in the service. Also like to thank everyone who brought food for the gift and go for the Lake Helen Food Pantry. And uh, we're so glad that everybody is supporting that. I'd like to announce that our book club is going to meet Wednesday, March 31st on Zoom. And we are reading Sue Monk Kids, The Book of Longings, about women in the time of Jesus. Remember our get-togethers, please. We have two virtual and two in-person. The virtual get-togethers are Sunday at 11.30 for fellowship and fun. And on Friday in the, at 7 o'clock in the evening, uh, we meet on Zoom for prayer and scripture. So you can check your bulletin or get in touch with me or Cindy for information on those. Our in-person gatherings happen one on Friday at 3 p.m. on the Parish House porch and Tuesdays at Karen and Louis Long's home at 6 p.m. This week we have one birthday coming up and that is Don Myers who will be celebrating on March 25th. Happy birthday Don! Let's worship. O oh God, we wish to see Jesus. We come to worship, to pray and learn. We come looking for Jesus in scripture lessons, in our own life experiences, in helping our world in prayers for each other. We seek to follow in the ways of Jesus. We lay bare before God and one another our own wilderness journey, filled with some gladness and hope, with reluctance and sorrow, 
with fear and confusion. O oh God, speak to us, show us, touch us with your presence. Let our Lenten journey lead us to Jesus so that we may show Jesus forth in our lives, our faith, community, and our world. Amen. Santo, 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 mi corazón te adora, mi corazón te sabe decir, Santo eres yo. Good morning. Welcome to Lake Helen First Congregational Church's uh, online virtual service. For, for those of you who may be new to this particular format, uh, my name is Elliot Fay. I'm very happy to be with you this morning. And I'd like to uh, begin this morning by reading our scripture passage for, uh, for this Sunday. And this passage comes from the Gospel of Mark. I'll be reading specifically from chapter 14, verses 32 through 42. They went to a place called Gethsemane. And Jesus said to his disciples, Sit here while I pray. And he took Peter, James, and John along with him. And he began to be deeply distressed and troubled. My soul is overwhelmed with sorrow to the point of death, he said to them. Stay here and keep watch. Going a little farther, he fell to the ground and prayed that if possible, the hour might pass from him. Abba, Father, he said, everything is possible for you. Take this cup from me, yet not what I will, but what you will. Then he returned to his disciples and he found them sleeping. Simon, he said to Peter, are you asleep? Couldn't you keep watch for one hour? 
watch and pray so that so that you will not fall into temptation the spirit is willing but the flesh is weak once more he went away and prayed the same thing when he came back he again found them sleeping because their eyes were heavy and they did not know what to say to him returning a third time he said to them are you still sleeping and resting enough the hour has come look the Son of Man is delivered into the hands of sinners. Rise, let us go. Here comes my betrayer. I'm sure that many of you will be able to identify with uh, what I'm about to describe, but my wife uh, likes to have background noise on when she's doing other kinds of things. And this often comes in the form of, uh, of Netflix shows or Amazon shows uh, streaming on her laptop. And so if she's in the kitchen uh, cooking or doing something in the kitchen, uh, she'll have her computer in there and on the computer will be Netflix and it'll be streaming some kind of a TV series or a movie. Or if she's in the bedroom or some other part of the house and she's uh, doing something in that part of the house, uh, the computer will be there, and again, there'll be something on in the background. Most of the time, she has her back turned towards it, or if she's in the kitchen and she's making food or cooking, uh, she might not even really be paying attention to what's on, but there it is on in the kitchen with her. And she is able to pay, uh, of course, half attention to these things as she does other things. But I am incapable of of ignoring something on the TV or on the computer. And so if I walk into the kitchen to ask her a question and there happens to be something on the TV, I'm immediately drawn to whatever that something is and I zero in on it and I have a hard time ignoring it. And this means that, uh, again, when I walk into the kitchen or bedroom or wherever she is and there is something on, I end up paying attention to it for those few minutes that I might be in the room. And what this amounts to is that I end up experiencing that TV series or that movie in a uh, uh, much less than ideal way. So for instance, if she's watching a TV series and one of the characters is in a really intense situation and I'm watching this and, and recognizing that this, at least in the, 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 the TV show, is meant to be something very harrowing, and then I leave. And then two hours later I come back and uh, at that point, or by that point, she's episodes beyond that in this TV series, and this character is completely fine, or on to another harrowing situation. And of course, I have no idea how, uh, how the situation resolved, or how the, the character got from that point to this point. Uh, I just know that something significant has changed. Or, if she's watching a movie, maybe one of those road trip kinds of movies where people start out, or... Uh, an adventure kind of thing and people are starting out on this adventure I watch a little bit of the beginning of that and then I disappear and 45 minutes or an hour later I come back and they're there now I I have no idea how they got there and I have no idea what happened in the middle of it I just know that they started here and they ended up here and uh, and that's all now I often pick up of course the gist of the show but I obviously miss a lot of the significant details right the things that really add depth uh, and, um, and help flesh out the story uh, that's being told. Well, this morning, we are deviating from the, the suggested gospel reading in the lectionary a little bit, and we're doing this because next Sunday is Palm Sunday. And uh, Palm Sunday, of course, is usually that Sunday where we uh, take time to think about Jesus' celebrated entrance into Jerusalem, right? Riding on a donkey. Uh, where he's welcomed by the people in the city. But, unless you happen to participate in between Palm Sunday and Easter, unless you happen to participate in a, 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 a Monday, Thursday service or catch a, a Good Friday service online, and some of you may, but I know many of, the, many of us don't. And so, uh, those of us who don't end up jumping directly from uh, Palm Sunday to Easter, and this is a little bit like walking into the kitchen in one of those road trip movies and then coming back when they arrive at the destination. 
right? You end up uh, missing a lot of the significant stuff that happens in the middle. Similarly, uh, jumping straight from Palm Sunday to Easter, we end up missing an awful lot uh, of what we're meant to understand about that final Easter week. And so, this morning we are jumping ahead a little bit into the story of Easter week, and we're looking at the, uh, the story of Jesus' last night, uh, just before he is arrested, as he prays in the Garden of Gethsemane, as recorded in the Gospel of Mark. And of course, in Mark's account, uh, this story takes place directly after the Last Supper meal that Jesus shared with his disciples. And that, that meal, of course, is, is what we loosely reenact during our communion services. Now, following this meal, Mark tells us that Jesus walks to an olive grove east of Jerusalem uh, called Gethsemane. And Jesus goes there, and as he goes there, he knows, he knows that the message of God and that the faith that he has been teaching and living out in these uh, previous years and months has so rattled the establishment the religious establishment, that he would very soon be arrested and martyred. And he goes to the Garden of Gethsemane with this knowledge in his mind, and so he asks the disciples to sit and keep watch as he himself goes a little further into the garden to pray. Now, I tried to look up a, a, um, a picture, uh, an artistic depiction of Jesus praying in the Garden of Gethsemane. As a matter of fact, this is my second attempt at recording this because I had a lovely picture on the iPad which didn't show up on the screen here when I uh, tried to show it. It just was this bright screen blur. But if you take a moment now and Google, or take a moment later and Google our artistic depictions of Jesus praying in the Garden of Gethsemane, you'll find a multitude of, of depictions. And interestingly, many of them uh, uh, you'll find some uh, unusual characteristics. Firstly, uh, you'll notice that Jesus looks surprisingly serene and collected. In the artistic depiction that I had chosen to show you, Jesus is kneeling and he's leaning against a rock and his, you know, his hands are neatly crossed and he has a halo above him and there's an angel off in the distance, right? And so he's peacefully looking up towards heaven, and he looks dignified, as I said, with his hands very nicely crossed. And, uh, and these depictions seem to have the effect of reminding us, as Jesus goes to um, this garden with this heavy burden on his heart, these depictions seem to convey the idea that Jesus is really not like us, right? And this impulse to sort of over-spiritualize the life of Jesus led to, in fact, other uh, 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 situations. In one case, the early edition in Luke's Gospel that angels came to minister to Jesus. And we see this reflected in many of the pictures, if you look them up, that you will um, see. Uh, uh, Jesus leaning on an angel or an angel standing behind Jesus ministering to him. Now, these representations spring from the thought that Jesus, who is supposed to be our model of faith, supposed to be our example of confident trust in God, couldn't, couldn't really be shaken, couldn't really be fearful in the face of suffering, even great suffering. And so we see the tendency to over-spiritualize this moment in Jesus' life, or as I said in the Gospel of Luke, to even have this addition of, of angels ministering to him, making everything okay. But this is, this is not at all the picture that uh, is presented to us in the Gospel of Mark. In Mark's account, Jesus is genuinely, deeply troubled at the thought of what was coming. So great was his distress and anxiety and fear in fact, that he couldn't even stand to pray as a good Jewish person, a person would. Uh, uh, in, in all circumstances, a Jewish person would always stand to pray. Jesus is so distraught, so anxious, that he falls to his knees, calling out for God to help him and to rescue him. 
See, for Mark, this picture of faith and need presents no problems, though. And in fact, I suspect, uh, suspect Mark included it because he knew that faith, however strong, doesn't rescue us from the troubles and hardships that sometimes we face in life. And he also knew that faith, however strong, often doesn't relieve us from the anxiousness and fear and distress that we will sometimes experience in those hard times. And so Mark presents for us, Mark shares with us this honest depiction, this human picture of Jesus' faith in the midst of real pain, real fear, real turmoil. A picture that doesn't pretend that faith provides an easy answer to life's troubles. So, if faith and prayer in the midst of times of suffering doesn't necessarily deliver us from suffering, or from the anxiousness or distress associated with suffering, then why did Jesus pray? And why are we, through Jesus' example, encouraged to pray or lean on our faith, particularly in those hard moments of life? What do we receive from faith and prayer in times like these? It seems to me uh, the question is begged. Well, among the many answers that we might offer to this question, the one, uh, the one that I'd like to highlight this morning is uh, that we receive hope. That we receive hope. Hope which may not save us from the storms of life, but which does serve as an anchor to our souls in the midst of these storms. Hope that arises as we lift our hearts to God and as we are uh, reminded that there is nothing that we will ever experience or ever walk through which uh, that we will walk through alone. Whether we're rejoicing or weeping or struggling to feel anything, God's Spirit is still with us. Sometimes we feel or sense the presence of God, sometimes we don't. But the act of praying reminds us that God is there nevertheless. In fact, that God is there regardless. And that where there is loss or suffering or even death, that there will also be restoration and growth and new life. An author that I uh, like a great deal, likes to describe the Christian life as a cycle of death and resurrection. Death and resurrection. And the important part of this exchange, this cycle, is that uh, this the cycle of resurrection, life, uh, uh, resurrection, uh, life, is that redemption always has the last word. Prayer reminds us that there is no darkness that will not eventually be driven away by the light in this life or in the next. And so, Jesus prayed. Because Jesus, even, needed to be reminded that he was not and would not be alone. Jesus, even, needed to be reminded that suffering and death would not be the end of his story. Because of his example, we are reminded of those same realities as we pray. Life doesn't always feel like Palm Sunday or Easter. Our passage this morning reminds us that even when life feels like Good Friday, through faith we are never left without hope. Would you pray this morning with Gracious God, we thank you so much for the honest picture of faith that we find in the, the Gospel of Mark. The, uh, the honest portrayal of the, the week of Easter, which isn't just a, a series of, of glorious highs of, of mountaintop experiences, but truly a roller coaster of an experience 
for Jesus, who was our example of faith. And so we are grateful for this reminder this morning that whether we find ourselves uh, on mountaintop or in the deepest valleys or somewhere in between, which is where we live most of our lives, but wherever we find ourselves, uh, we can have hope and uh, assurance that you are with us, that you will always be with us, and that you will always see us through. Gracious God, we thank you this morning for the example of, um, of, of faith that we see in Jesus' life, of uh, faith that struggled and, and was uh, anxious mm -hmm. and found itself uh, strained, but nevertheless was able to see uh, light and hope and the promise of redemption, even in those moments. May we, gracious God, have eyes to see those, um, those wonderful things that you provide for us as we walk through the ups and downs of life. We pray it in Christ's name this morning. Let us open our hearts and minds to prayer. During the final days of his earthly life, Jesus offered up prayers and supplications with loud cries and tears. And in faithful obedience, he opened the way to eternal salvation. Let us open our hearts this day as we lift up our deepest needs and concerns to the one who is mighty to save. We pray, God, for all the leaders and people, that by the power of your cross, you would drive out all violence and domination and injustice in our world as you draw us to your Christ. We pray for our war-ravaged world that you would teach us to walk together in your way of righteousness and peace. We pray for the vocation of the church, that our prayers would bear the fruit of action as we hear the cries of pain and suffering of those in need. We pray for the poor, the terrified, and the oppressed, and those who are too much alone, that they may find a home in you as we serve them in your name. As your son anticipated his death on the cross, in light of your steadfast love, may all who have died or who are dying be at rest in your eternal care. Now, God, hear our voices as we pray together the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. i 
We thank you, God, for today, for being with us, accepting our worship and prayers, and for guiding us on our way. Bless us as we go, and in turn, may we bless others. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you for attending and viewing our virtual service. These are certainly strange times, and we have had to learn and do new things as we closed our doors to keep the congregation and community safe and healthy. But COVID-19 has not stopped Lake Helen UCC from being the church. We are the church from home. We are always here for you. There are several ways to find out what we are doing and how you can reach out to us in your time of need. Find out what we're doing through our website at lakehelen-ucc.com. That's lakehelen-ucc.com. Or on Facebook by putting in the search at lakehelenucc. 
That's the at sign at Lake Helen UCC. Our email address is Lake Helen UCC at CFL dot RR dot com. Again, Lake Helen UCC at CFL dot RR dot com. Our phone number is three eight six two one eight five nine seven six. That's three eight six two one eight five nine seven six. Thank you. Stay safe. Be blessed.